All right, gang, this is uh, January the 24th. It is a Wednesday. Um, if you are curious about what we'll be doing this cycle on Wednesdays, or if you, uh, if you, didn't, if you didn't hear about it already, then uh, just know we're gonna be working towards the strength and some of the skills necessary to do things like handstand push-ups. So uh, we say like because if you're doing things that progress you towards handstand push-ups, then what else are you doing? You're also doing things that progress you towards handstand walking, uh, wall walks, wall-facing wall, wall walks. And if we're going to break it down even further, those are gymnastics movements. And anytime we work on something for uh, uh, handstand push-ups, you can bet that that skill is going to also translate to other gymnastics movements as well. Um, some, some more than others. So what do we have today? We're going to do some four-quality uh, accessory work that leads us there. And the first thing is tripod holds. If you're an OG, you know, if you've been around even just a couple of years, you've probably done these before. Uh, what tripod holds aim to do is break into your brain where your hands need to be relative to your head when you line up to do a handstand push-up. Most people want to have their hands back next to their head when in reality we need to be in this strong position just like we would for a barbell or for dumbbells getting ready to press them over your head instead of it being a dumbbell or barbells it's our own body we were pressing overhead so things don't change we keep everything nice and strong out in front and that's what the tripod hold will show us obviously there's a little bit more to it than that but that's the gist of it um you know one of the first things they taught us at our gymnastics courses the other two things we're going to do are seated shoulder presses, which are things that we will ask you to do as a modification for handstand push-ups from time to time. So this is seated so that we can take away any momentum gained from the legs, really just isolate the shoulders while you press overhead, getting really strong in the delt area. And then we also have around the box rotations. Again, something that we've used as a scale for um for handstand walks for a really long time and you can consider that one to be a mix of both strength and skill so we have tripod holds which is really just a skill thing because it doesn't it should be comfortable honestly and then we have seated shoulder presses which are more of a strength thing and then we have the try the around the world on the box thing and that's going to be more of a this is this is going to get you closer to handstand walking but it's more of a combination strength and skill anybody who's done that before will tell you they they are rough they can be on the shoulders and i mean that in a good way all right so what is the wad so we mentioned in our in our video of the uh you know upcoming cycle that wednesday workouts when it's skill related can mean a lot to a lot of people. Um, there's a pretty wide variety of stimuluses that are potentially felt on a day like today. So while we do program to stimulus, it's tough to do that on a skill day. We have double unders in today's workout. We have toes to bar in today's workout. And we also have handstand push-ups in today's workout. Those are three skills that, that there are plenty of people at our gym who rightfully so and quite normal can raise their hand and say, I, don't, I can't do any of those the prescribed way. So for some people, a workout like that is just immediately modified, right? I'm going to get a good workout and that's why I'm here. So I'm just going to modify the things in a way that allows me to keep moving through it. Um, and then there are people on the complete opposite end of the spectrum who are like, I do have those skills. And this is a volume that's good enough for me to try this thing. Um, and I would love for them to say that about all three of those movements, but that might not be the case. So it might be they can say that about one or two of the movements, but not all. And then there are the people mostly who we have who are the, the in-betweeners, right? So you have one, maybe two of these skills, or you have partial of some of these skills. And so the question is, what do I do? Do I make this a really good sweat workout where I don't actually do any of the prescribed version of any of these? Or do I look at this as a practice day? I'm not going to get a lot of rounds because I'm going to be spending a lot of time kicking about, but I am going to practice the movements and leave feeling somewhat better about myself on them. And I think we're going to be all over the map when it comes to that stuff. So what are the movements? It's 16 minutes, first of all. So it's an AMRAP, 16 minutes, where we have some skills and i'm going to say it's a low volume of those skills but this is one of those areas where like i'm a bad 
I'm a, I'm a bad narrator. I don't know how to give advice. I, I am pretty good at these movements. But the movements are 24 double unders and then eight toes to bar. 24 double unders and then eight handstand push-ups. So your mileage is going to vary on whether or not that's a lot or, or a little. On a per round basis, I would say anything less than 10 should be considered a little bit. A doable amount. So for toes to bar, coming off of a cycle where we worked on that quite a bit, I want to be able to say that regardless of the modification you use, we're going to be able to do eight in a row, at least for a few rounds. That'd be awesome. Um, or at least chip away at eight singles. Um, that's not eight in a row, but I just mean don't walk away. The double unders, same thing we always say. You can jump right to singles, 48 of them per, per, you know, per time. Um, or you can work on 24 double unders, which is a doable amount for most people who even you know, approach that skill. Or you can do a lesser amount. Hold yourself accountable to 10 or 15, whatever would be a challenge to you. When it comes to the handstand push-ups, that's the skill we're working on. We did throw them in last week. We have been dabbling with them. Eight is not a necessarily not necessarily a number that people are going to be able to do unbroken for a long period of time, but we do think you can get them done in two sets of four. I would say it's possible some people are going to go throw a third set in there, and that's okay, especially towards the end. But really give it a shot. Use the skills that we learned in the in the uh, skill portion or the skill strength portion of the class to hopefully learn something new, figure something out. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty big shoulder day, but the last two days were mostly about legs. Um, handstand push-ups can be modified in many different ways. A lot of people know what their their preferred skill or, or uh, progression is for those. So we can go back to those dub, uh, the, the, uh, the dumbbells that we use for the strength, maybe a little bit lighter so that we can move more quickly through it. Um, we can do our piked variations. Some people can do the version on the box. Uh, all kinds of ways that we can do this. I, I, you know, you could even suggest some things to me that I would accept this, uh, depending on what kind of stimulus you're able to get out of it. In any case, uh, I did this one. I said I'm not a good example for you guys. I, I think my score is 10 plus 26. Um, I thought I had a lot of fun. All right, enjoy.